Now let's start with the important topic that is dielectric and polarization. This topic is very important for you in order to proceed further and in order to understand the capacitors. Okay, the base for capacitor is dielectric. So I am going to tell you that what is dielectric in this study. Now, as the materials are classified into two types, that is the conductors and the non-conductors, okay, as we all know. But this dielectric, this comes in which classification? Is it as a conductor or it is a insulator? The dielectric is basically a insulator, okay. It does not allow the electric current to flow through it. Like an insulator, the insulator contains no free electrons. They are tightly bound to the nucleus. So, they are not allowed to roam inside the insulator. That's why they cannot conduct electricity. Similar is the case of dielectric also. In this case also, it contains no free electrons. They are tightly bound to the nucleus. But still, the dielectric is somewhat different from that of the insulator and that you will understand later on because in that particular difference there is a word which is called polarization. So we can say so that dielectric basically gets polarized while insulator does not get polarized. Now what is this polarization? The polarization is the second part of our study and you will understand it later on. First our motive is to understand the dielectric. Now the dielectric are divided into two types that is the structure of dielectric are basically divided into two categories. The first category is your non-polar dielectric and the second category is your polar dielectric. Now we will understand these two terms one by one. First let us understand the term that is polar dielectric. This polar dielectric as the name suggests polar that means it represents pole okay when we talk about the pole that means we are talking about the positive and the negative end and when the positive and the negative end makes the poles that means we are talking about the di Pole. So, in this condition, when we talk about the polar, we have certain examples. What are the examples in the case of polar dielectric? They can be HCl, they can be NaCl, they can be water, etc. These all comes under the polar dielectric. How it is different? Basically, these two are different in their structures, okay? That is how they are oriented, how the atoms are oriented inside the non-polar and polar. This is the basic difference between the two. In polar, let us take the example of NaCl, okay. This is one atom of Na sodium, okay. It contains positive. Similarly, there is another atom of chlorine and this is negative, okay. We all know that when Na plus and Cl minus, they both come into contact with each other, then due to the high electrostatic attraction force between the two, it forms a molecule of NaCl. Now, this is not our concern. Our concern is to check out the polarity, the two poles of NaCl. In this condition, the sodium consists of positive ion. So, the positive has a center, let's say this. This is the center of a positively charged ion of the sodium. Similarly, the chlorine has a negative charge and this is the center of a chlorine which is negatively charged. So, you can see here from the diagram that this positive and this negative, they both are separated by a particular distance and the distance between them is let's say represented by small d. Now, this is positive and this is negative. When the two positive and the negative poles, they are separated by a small distance, then they form an electric dipole. So we can say so that in the case of polar dielectric, the electric dipole is formed. And when there is a distance between the two, that is between positive and negative, so in this condition, the dipole movement exists. Okay, now. When the dipole moment exists because of the distance, the distance is small d, so the formula of the dipole moment is charge into the distance, that is small d. Now, if this value exists, that means the charge also exists. In the case of polar dielectric, the dipole moment exists. Similarly, the charge also exists. So, we can say so that polar dielectric are very much effective dielectric 
system. So this is all about the polar dielectric. Now let's move on to the non-polar dielectric. Like we have seen in the case of polar, we have certain examples. Similarly, in the case of non-polar also, there are many examples like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. These all come under the non-polar. Okay, the structure of these molecules are arranged in such a way so that it makes them different in order to classify into non-polar and polar categories. Now, let's say we take the example of oxygen. Okay, in this case, the oxygen is formed by two atoms of O. This is the first atom of O and this is the second atom of O. This is first and this is second. When these two combine, then they form O2. This O consists of a positively charged ion and similarly it consists of a positively charged. Now, this positive charge and this positive charge, we have to find out from the formula of center of mass, the center of these two positively charged atoms. Now, if we have to find the center of mass of these two positively charged atoms, then from the formula we found that the center of these two positive charge resides at this particular point. So, what is the center of the positive charge of these two atoms? It comes at the this particular point which is shown by a dot. This O consists of 6 electrons. Okay. Similarly, this O also consists of 6 electrons. Okay. Now, these 6 electrons and these 6 electrons, we have to find out the center of mass of these 6 electrons and these 6 electrons individually. Okay. If we have to calculate using the same formula from where we have calculated the positive center mass, you have to calculate the negative center mass. And on calculating, we have noticed that the center of mass of the electrons inside the O atom also come at the same point. That means the center of the negatively charged electrons and the center of the positively charged atom, they both come at the same point. Now you tell me that if this is the point and another point also comes at the same point, then is the distance exist between them? No, there won't be any distance between them. So now you can see that the positive come at this point and at the same point the negative also comes. So they form a dipole because positive and negative form a dipole. But the distance between them is 0. And from the formula P is equals to Q into D, if the distance is 0, that means the dipole movement is also 0. If the dipole movement is 0, so we can say so the non-polar are non-affective. So this is the difference between the non-polar and the polar. Polar are affective. Why? Because the, of the existence of the dipole movement. Similarly, non-polar are non-affective because the dipole movement is zero. And how the dipole movement is zero? That is the distance between the two charges, that is the positive and the negative charges, that is the dipole, the distance is zero. It is made in such a way that their center, the positive center and the negative center coincide at a particular point. So now let's move on to the next topic that is let's see that how the dielectric reacts when they are placed inside the external electric field. Now, based on this question that how the dielectric react when it is placed in an external field, we are going to frame out the difference between the conductors and the dielectric. What we have studied till far that when any conductor is placed inside the electric field, okay, so in that condition what happened? The conductor neutralizes the electric field. The net electric field inside the conductor becomes zero. Okay, so now let's first talk about the conductor and then we are going to differentiate it with that of the dielectric. In the case of conductor, suppose these are the two conducting plates. Okay, This is the first conducting plate and this is the second one. In this first one, positive charge is accumulated. In this, the negative charge is accumulated. What we have done that between these two, the electric field exists. This electric field is the external electric field. So, we have represented by E naught. Now, if we talk about the conductor. So, this is a conductor 
conductor. In the case of conductor, we have seen that the free electrons inside the conductor, they are free to move with no boundaries. So what they do that they align themselves towards the positive plate while the protons move towards this side. That is, they align towards the negative plate. Okay, now in this particular condition, there exists a internal field also inside this conductor and this internal field we have represented it by EI. Now, what is the property of the conductor? The conductor has a property that this internal electric field is strong enough to cancel out the external electric field. That means if we have to find out the net electric field that too inside the conductor. So, it gives us that E0 minus of EI because both are heading in opposite direction. E0 is heading towards right hand side and EI is heading towards the left hand side. So, both are heading in opposite direction. So, we have subtracted there and your answer is 0. So, we have studied that the net electric field inside the conductor is 0. Now, the same phenomenon is compared for the dielectric case. Now, let us see what will happen that instead of conductor, if I remove this conductor and I put a dielectric in this condition. What will happen when we place a dielectric? Again, this, these are the two conducting plates with one side positive and the other side as fully negative. Again, there exists the external electric field which is given by E0. Now, what we have done that we put a dielectric within this external field. How the dielectric reacts? Now, just concentrate on this particular topic that the free electrons are there inside the conductor. They are free so they can move and align themselves in a particular pattern like they have done in this particular case. Okay. Now, we have seen that the negative aligned towards this side and positive aligned towards that side. Okay. What do you mean the positive aligned towards that? As I have told you that positive move towards that side. Do it really make a sense that positive charges move to a particular position? No. There is no positive charges that move from one place to another. What move? Only electrons move. When then the electrons leave any position and then there occurs the deficiency of electrons and that deficiency of electrons lead to the positive ions. Now, in this condition also, the negative electrons move towards this side. So, there occurs the deficiency of electrons and that's why I I have written the positive towards the other side. Okay, so no positive charges move. So don't get confused that the positive charges move. No, only the free electrons move. Now, in the case of dielectric, they do not have any free electrons because this is a insulator. So what will happen when I place a dielectric? Then this dielectric consists of atoms. Okay, these atoms are very tightly packed. It does not contain any free electrons that can move freely as in the case of conductor. In this case, the atoms are very tightly packed and as soon as it is placed inside the external electric field, then these atoms get redistributed and they get stretched and align themselves in a particular direction. Okay, now how they get stretched? Suppose this is one atom of a dielectric. Okay. As soon as the electric field is passed, then this particular atom gets stretched. Okay. And what happened? That negative come towards one side and positive comes towards the another side. Similar is the condition here also. The negative come towards the positive side and positive come towards the negative side. So, all of these atoms align themselves and redistribute themselves in a particular direction with no exact movement as in the case of a conductor. Now, this is the major difference between the dielectric and the conductor. In the conductor, the free electrons actually move from one place to another. But in dielectric, it does not move from one place to another. There is a slight displacement or we can say that there is a redistribution or realignment of the stretched atoms. Now, in this case also, there occurs a induced electric field which is created by the dielectric atoms and electric field direction is from positive to the negative. So, now let us represent in this case 
the electric field as E of P. So what is E of P? The E of P is the electric field which is created by the atoms of the dielectric and that too inside the dielectric. So this is the E P is formed by every every small small atoms. Okay now the property of the dielectric is if you have to find out the net electric field. So in this condition again you have to do the subtraction that is E not minus E P because both are heading in opposite direction. So here we are going to do that E naught minus EP. But in this particular condition, this value is not equals to 0. So this is also the basic difference between the dielectric and the conductor. In the conductor, the net electric field inside the conductor is 0. While in the case of dielectric, the net electric field is not equals to 0. And this is the property of the dielectric that makes it very useful in the capacitors. In capacitors, the dielectric is used to store energy. And how it stores energy? It stores energy because of this property. The net electric field is not equal to zero. That means there exists some amount of electric field inside the dielectric. And this is the property which is helpful in order to store the electrical energy for the capacitor. So it is used to increase the capacitance value. Now, there is a very important term which is related to what we have studied till far and that important term is called polarization. This polarization is a very important term and you can easily understand it by means of this diagram. What happens that when the external field is applied and the dielectric is placed in between them, then the atoms inside the dielectric, they align themselves in a particular direction. That is negative move towards one side and positive move towards another side. This alignment of the charges in a particular pattern is called polarization. So what is polarization? Let's define it. The polarization is basically used to give direction. Okay, Whenever it provides direction to the charges, that is negative come to one side and positive come to the another side. In that particular condition, the polarization exists. So now from this particular study, if I ask you that when polarization will exist, then your answer should be that polarization only exists when the external electric field is applied. So there is a condition with that of the polarization. In that particular condition, the charges align themselves in a particular pattern. Now let's understand the topic polarization in detail. Okay. Now, as I've already told you that the polarization is used to give direction to the charges. Now, we are studying dielectric. Okay. So we have already studied that dielectric are classified into non-polar and polar categories. And these two different categories of the dielectric, they behave differently when they get polarized. So now we are going to study that how the non-polar and the polar dielectric behave when they are placed inside the external electric field. Now let's study first about the non-polar dielectric. In this particular condition, this is a non-polar dielectric. Okay, the non-polar dielectric consists of the atoms. Okay, these are the atoms. These are the atoms and these atoms have their positive and negative charges at the same center. That is, there exists no dipole movement between them. So this is how their atoms looks like. Now, what will happen when the electric field is applied? In that particular condition, we have to take two parallel rods. These are the two parallel rods. One side of the rod is positive and the other side of the rod is negative. So there exists the external electric field. This external electric field is represented by E0. What we have done that we took this non-polar dielectric and place it inside this electric field. Okay. Now what will happen? In this case these atoms, okay, these atoms get stretched and they reorient or realign themselves according to the direction of the electric field. Now what will happen that this is the atom which is circular in shape because the positive and the negative both are at the same 
line. So in this particular condition, now these atoms get stretched. Okay, they look like this. They get stretched and they align themselves in the direction of the electric field. That is negative curve towards the positive side and positive come towards the negative side. Similarly, negative and positive. Now you can see here that they are arranged in random direction and there is no alignment and no stretching in between the non-polar dielectric. But as soon as the electric field is applied, they get stretched and the electrons align themselves towards the positive side. And during the vacancy of the electron, there exists the positive charge near the negative plate. Now, these are all the atoms which are inside the non-polar dielectric. So this is how the non-polar dielectric reacts when it is placed inside the electric field. Now, due to this stretching and realignment, there exists an internal electric field. And the direction of the internal electric field is from positive to negative. So the direction of the electric field is from positive to negative and this internal electric field is represented by E of P. So what is E of P? E of P is basically the polarized electric field. Now, this polarized electric field or we can say this induced electric field is formed when the electric field is applied and all the charges inside this dielectric gets aligned in a particular direction. So, this is the condition of polarization. What happened that the non-polar dielectric undergo through the process of polarization. So, in this case, whatever the electric field is produced, that electric field is called polarized electric field and that's why we we have mentioned it by E of P. P represents polarization. If we have to find out the total electric field, then it is given by E naught minus of E P. And in the case of dielectric, as I've already told you, that these two terms are not cancelled out and you will get some value of the net electric field. Okay, now let's move on to the second case that is the polar dielectric. In the polar dielectric, if let's say this is a polar dielectric, so in this particular condition, the atoms are already stretched, okay? These atoms are already stretched. You don't need to stretch the atoms. Like in this particular condition, the atoms get stretched when the external electric field is applied. But in this condition, originally the atoms are stretched. So what will happen and how they will react when this place in the external field? Now let's see with a proper demonstration. In this particular condition, again, we took the conductors. Okay, this is one plate of the conductor. This is second. The positive plates are on one side and negative plates are on another side. Again, the external field is created and this external field is E0. This dielectric we took and place it here. So this is the dielectric. Now how atoms react when they are placed inside this external field? Now let's see. In this particular condition, these atoms, you can see these atoms, they are already stretched but they are in random direction. They don't have any particular direction. So when they are placed inside the electric field, in this particular condition, they get aligned in a particular direction. So this is the alignment of the the polar dielectric with negative towards the positive side and positive towards the negative side. So this is the case of the polar dielectric. In this case also there exists EP that is the polarized electric field and this polarized electric field is created because this polar dielectric is polarized. So this is the case of the polarization of the polar dielectric. If you have to find out the net electric field in this condition so it becomes E naught minus EP which is not equals to zero. So now in both the conditions you can see here that in this particular diagram that is the non-polar dielectric what happened? There is no dipole movement. In this case you can see there is no dipole movement as I've already told you that initially the dipole movement in the non-polar dielectric is absent. It is zero. Now when it is subjected to polarization in this condition there exists a dipole movement and how the dipole movement exists you can see here these get stretched okay when these atoms get stretched then there occurs a particular separation between the negative and the positive charge due to this separation between the dipole there exists a dipole movement
टू में सो हाउ द डायलेक्ट्रिक रियक्ट वेन इट इज पोलराइज इट प्रोड्यूज द डाइपोल मूवमेंट इन दिस कंडीशन ऑल्सो यू कैन सी दैट In this case, the dipole moment already exists. Okay, initially also there exists a considerable separation between the negative and the positive charges. So there already exists the dipole moment. When the electric field is applied, then what will happen? The dipole moment retains because it was already there, and they get aligned in a particular direction. So there is an important conclusion that we can draw from the polarization of the dielectric. The dielectric when it gets polarized, then it produces. is the dipole movement so you have to consider and you have to keep in mind that due to polarization the dipole movement exists in the case of dielectric no matter it is non polar or it is polar dielectric